Hello, and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at examples of solving equations involving rational expressions. When we solve equations, we determine the value or values for the variable that makes the statement true. That makes up the values of the solution set. If there are fractions, we can eliminate the denominators by determining the least common denominator and rewriting each term as an equivalent with that least common denominator. So, for example, if we want to solve the equation, um, here we have x over 6 equals 3 over 8 minus x over 4. So here, the least common denominator would be 24, because that's the smallest number that 6, 8, and 4 all go into. So what we want to do is rewrite x over 6 instead of x over 6, something that's equivalent to x over 6, but with a denominator of 24. Meaning we would need to multiply 6 by 4, and whatever we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator, to make that multiplying actually by 1. We're going to do the same thing with 3 over 8. 8, um, to get that to be 24, we would need to multiply it by 3. So we'll multiply that fraction by 3 over 3. x over 4, 4 we need to multiply by 6. So we're going to multiply this fraction by 6 over 6. That's going to give us 4x over 24 equals 9 over 24 minus 6x over 24. And then, once all of the denominators are the same, I can just multiply the entire thing by 24. And what's going to happen is this 24, when we distribute it, is going to cancel out the denominators, leaving us with 4x equals 9 minus 6x. Now we're done with the fractions, which is nice. Um, this is a, a linear equation since there's no exponent larger than 1. So we will get x's together on one side. I'm going to add 6x to both sides. And now we have 10x equals 9. Divide both sides by 10 to get x by itself. And we get x equals 9 tenths. If we want to, we could plug in 9 tenths for x to make sure we do get a true equation, but we're going to pretend like we just absolutely know that it's right. In letter B, um, here we have the denominators 4, 2, and 10. The least common denominator would be 20. So we want to do the same thing. We're going to multiply 4 by 5, which means we need to multiply the numerator by 5 as well. Here we need to multiply 2 by 10. We need to multiply the numerator by 10. Here we need to multiply 10 by 2, so we're going to multiply the numerator by 2 as well. This is going to give me 5y minus 10 over 20 minus 10y, oops, minus 10, let's try it again, minus 10 over tw uh, 20 equals 2y squared over 20. Now that they all have that same denominator, we can multiply by 20 and that's going to cancel all those out. We just want to be really careful here because when we rewrite this, this numerator needs to go in parentheses. That whole numerator needs to get subtracted. So we just need to make sure that that happens. Um, that would be 10y, and then if we distribute the subtraction here, that would be plus 10 equals 2y squared. I notice this equation is a quadratic equation. To solve a quadratic, we want to actually set it equal to 0. We, can't, we won't be able to get y by itself, so we're going to set the whole thing equal to 0 since 2y is positive, I'm going to move everything else to the other side. So that's going to be 0 equals 2y squared, and then, oh look, the minus 10 and plus 10 cancel. My, uh, 5y and negative 5y make minus 5y on this side, so to undo that I would add 5y. So we're going to end up with 2y squared plus 5y equals 0. And now we can factor uh, out a GCF, so we would say 0 equals y times 2y plus 5, and now we set each factor equal to 0. So first, y equals 0, and that would be one solution. Second, we have 2y plus 5 equals 0. That means that 2y equals negative 5, and y equals negative 5 over 2. So this particular equation has two solutions. We have negative 5 over 2 and 0. Now, these were just examples of rational expressions with numerical denominators. What we're going to look at now is when we have variables in the denominators. So with rational expressions, we must check our work when we have variables in the denominator to look for extraneous solutions. Extraneous solutions are solutions that aren't in the domain, so they appear to be solutions, but they're not actually in the domain, and therefore they're not actually solutions. So if we end up with an extraneous solution, they're not part of the answer. We would, they would get thrown out. The domain contains, so talking about the domain, the domain contains the set of possible answers for each equation. To determine the restrictions on the domain, we set each denominator equal to zero. If there are real number values, those values are not in the domain. So first we want to state the domain for each equation. Oh, that's all we're doing here. Okay, cool. So 
um, what are the possible values that x is allowed to be? Well, x is not allowed to be 0, so that would be a restriction on the domain. And x, is not, uh, x plus 5 is not allowed to be 0, because if x plus 5 equals 0, then we have a 0 in the denominator, which is a problem. So that means x cannot equal negative 5. So those are the two values that x is not allowed to be. And we would want to keep that in mind if we were to solve this equation, but it's just asking for the domain. So to write the domain, it would be from negative infinity to negative 5, from negative 5 to 0, and from 0 to infinity. And uh, we just pluck out the points that it couldn't possibly be. Okay, for letter B, if we're going to set each... Now, I say set each denominator equal to 0, and then I actually said, nope, this isn't actually allowed to be 0. Either way is fine. Um, it's just whether you set it equal to 0 or not, we're looking at the things that ultimately x is not allowed to be. So in example A, x can be any number between negative infinity and negative 5, between negative 5 and 0, and between 0 and infinity. And it's only going to be one number or two numbers, or three numbers in this case, actually. Um, but if any of those numbers happen to be 0 or negative 5, they're not actually solutions. Okay, so this one, first thing we want to do is factor. So this is going to be x minus 4 times x minus 2. This one's going to be 3x times x minus 4. And this one would be x minus 2 squared. So now we have each one. So we know here that x minus 4 times x minus 2 can't be 0. That means that x minus 4 can't be 0. And x minus 2 can't be 0. So that means x can't be 4 and x can't be 2. So there's two restrictions so far. Let's see if the next denominator adds anything to that. I see a repeated factor, so we don't need to worry about this x minus 4 factor because we've already taken that into account. We already know x can't be 4. But 3x also can't equal 0, which means x can't be 0. So there's a third restriction. And then looking at our third fraction, x minus 2 squared, we already have the consideration that x minus 2 can't equal 0. That's this x uh, cannot be 2. So we don't need to worry about that last fraction either. So the domain for this one, the allowable solutions are anywhere between negative infinity and 0, between 0 and 2, between 2 and 4, and between 4 and infinity. So that's just stating the domain. We don't need to be this fancy when we're checking the rationals. Usually I would just leave this just to say, okay, these are the things that it's not allowed to be. So here's my suggested steps for solving equations that contain rational expressions. First, factor each denominator like we just did. There's no need to factor the numerators, and I strongly suggest you don't. Next, determine the domain or restrictions on the domain by setting each denominator either equal to 0 or not equal to 0 using the not equal to sign. Third, find the least common denominator of the terms. Fourth, rewrite each statement as an equivalent term with that least common denominator. Five, we multiply all terms by the least common denominator, which is going to cancel out those denominators. Six, solve the remaining equation. If it's linear, you want to get x by itself. If it's quadratic, you probably want to set it equal to zero. If it's something else, that depends. And then we want to check to see if we have any extraneous solutions. And then if we do, we're going to pull those out and we're going to write our solution set. All right, so our first example. First of all, 6 is just a number. We're going to put it, turn it into a rational number by putting it while well, it is rational. But we're going to show that it's rational by putting it over 1. And now we don't need to worry about factoring because there's nothing to factor here. Let's look at our restrictions. So x squared is not allowed to be 0, which means x can't equal 0. And then here, same thing, x can't be 0. So just off to the side somewhere, we just want to make it really well known that x can't be 0 in case that comes up. Once we've established that, we're going to kind of forget about it and move on with the problem. So here, for those three rational expressions, the least common denominator will be x squared. And we're going to rewrite each fraction to have that denominator of x squared. So x squared, x squared. This one already has x squared. This one we need to multiply by x. That's going to give us 6x squared over x squared minus 5 over x squared equals 7x over x squared. Now that they all have that common denominator, if I multiply everything by x squared, that's going to cancel out the denominators, leaving me with 6x squared minus 5x equals 7x. I can see here that we're dealing with a quadratic, so I'm going to subtract 7x from both sides. That way it's set equal to 0. And now I'm going to see if it's factorable. So the target product would be negative 30 
the target sum would be negative 7. Two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and add up to negative 7 would be negative 10 and positive 3. So I'm going to expand the middle and say 6x squared minus 10x plus 3x minus 5 equals 0. And then we can factor by grouping. So 6x squared and 10x have a GCF of 2x. That would leave me with 3x minus 5. 3x and minus 5 have a GCF of 1. It's the rare time where I actually want to write that 1, just so I don't forget that it's there. And now we're going to pull out the GCF from the two terms, 3x minus 5 times 2x plus 1 equals 0. We're going to set each factor equal to 0. 3x minus 5 equals 0, and that would be 3x equals 5. Divide both sides by 3, we get x equals 5 thirds. And 2x plus 1 equals 0. That means 2x equals negative 1. That means x equals negative 1 half. So these are the two potential solutions. We just need to go back and verify up here that neither of them were restrictions. They weren't because neither of them are 0. So our solution set, we can say x equals, put them in order from least to greatest, negative 1 half comma 5 thirds. In another example, uh, first thing we want to do is, well, we don't have to worry about factoring. I'm going to put this guy over 1. And now we're going to see what the restrictions on the domain are. So we're going to take the two denominators that we have that are not 1 are the same. So we just need to pick one of them and say, well, x minus 1 cannot equal 0. That means that x cannot equal 1. So we're going to come up here and put it up there that x cannot equal 1. Now we're going to identify our least common denominator between these three fractions. And that's going to be x minus 1. The only one that needs that is the 5. So we're going to multiply, or actually it's the 5 over 1. Um, so the 1 needs the factor of x minus 1. Now we're going to say 1 over x minus 1 plus 5x minus 5 over x minus 1 equals 11 over x minus 1. Now that they all have the same denominator, we can multiply all three terms by x minus 1, canceling these factors out. That gives us 1 plus 5x minus 5 equals 11. This is a linear equation. So because it's linear, we will uh, get x by itself. So first I'm going to add 1 and negative 5. That would be minus 4. And then to get x by itself, I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So that would give me 5x equals 15. Divide both sides by 5, and we get x equals 3. Uh, double checking with the restrictions, 3 does not equal 1. So that is, in fact, the solution. So this would be our final answer here. Our next example, um, again, we don't have to worry about factoring, so we're in luck here. We do want to figure out the restrictions on the domain. I know that n cannot equal 0, so that's one restriction. And I know n minus 3 cannot equal 0. These two factors are the same, so this is going to hold for this one too. This means that n cannot equal 3. So the two restrictions, n cannot be 0, n cannot be 3. We're going to keep that up there, and we're going to check at the end. All right, next we're going to identify the least common denominator. The least common denominator would be n times n minus 3. So the n is missing a factor of n minus 3, n minus 3. Here the n minus 3 is missing a factor of n, and this one is missing a factor of n. That would give us 7n minus 21 over n times n minus 3 plus n squared over n times n minus 3 equals 3n times uh, over n times n minus 3. Now we can cancel out those denominators by multiplying by n times n minus 3. And we're left with the numerators. 7n minus 21 plus n squared equals 3n. I notice this equation is a quadratic, so we want to set it equal to 0. While I'm setting it equal to 0, I'm also going to simultaneously rearrange it so that the n squared comes first. So it's going to be n squared. I need to subtract 3n from both sides, plus 4n minus 21 equals 0. And now I want to solve. So this is a quadratic. Target product is negative 21. Target sum is 4. That's going to factor into n plus 7 times n minus 3 equals 0. Set each factor equal to 0 if n plus 7 equals 0. Oh, I ran out of room. Let me put it over here. So n equals negative 7. And then this one is n minus 3 equals 0, so n will equal 3. We want to double check to make sure these are both valid solutions. Uh-oh, I see a problem here. 
three is not allowed. It wasn't in the domain to begin with. This one gets thrown out. So the only solution is n equals negative seven. We throw out that other one because it wasn't in the domain. So we have n equals negative seven. In our last example, we actually have something to factor this time, finally. That would be this difference of squares, which is going to factor into y, minus, uh, y plus 3 times y minus 3. So now the restrictions. So this factor and this factor are the same. So based on those, we know that y plus 3 cannot equal 0, which means y cannot equal negative 3. And the last two factors are the same. y minus 3 cannot equal 0, so y cannot be positive 3. So restrictions, the domain does not contain negative 3 or 3. Therefore, those cannot possibly be solutions. Next, we're going to identify our least common denominator. The least common denominator is going to be that x plus 3 times x minus 3. This uh, rational expression is missing. Oh, I said x, but really it's y. Let's try that again. Okay, we're missing a y minus 3 over here. So we're going to multiply the denominator and the numerator by y minus 3. This one has both the factors, so we're off the hook there. This one needs the y plus 3 y plus 3. Okay, I'm going to distribute as I rewrite this. Um, that's going to be 2y squared minus 2y minus 6y plus 6 minus 18. Oops, sorry. All of this is over y plus 3. And the 18 is over y plus 3. And here we have y squared plus 3y minus 6y minus 18 all over y plus 3. Oh, wait, sorry times y minus 3. I'm going to carry it away here. The good news is these denominators are about to go away anyway. Now we're going to take the entire equation and multiply it by y plus 3 and y minus 3, which will conveniently cancel all of these out, leaving us with 2y squared minus 2y minus 6y plus 6 minus 18 equals, stop that, y squared Plus, uh, minus 3y minus 18. And let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Um, first I'm going to move this y squared, so minus y squared, and that'll give me y squared. 2y squared minus y squared is y squared. Minus 2y and minus 6y, that's negative 8y, but then I'm going to add 3y to that, so negative 8y plus 3y would be minus 5y. Um, 6 minus 18 is negative 12, but then I'm going to add 18, so we're going to go back to that positive 6. Now I'm ready to factor this. Luckily, leading coefficients 1, so we can use the shortcut. Winning combination here, a positive 6 and a negative 5, would be y minus 3 and y minus 2. We set each factor equal to 0. If y minus 3 equals 0, then y equals 3. And if y minus 2 equals 0, then y equals 2. These are our two potential solutions. However, this one gets thrown out again because 3 was not part of the domain. So our only answer is 2.